Pastor Tom Arnold welcoming you to the Good News Radio broadcast. On today's program, I'll be sharing a message titled, How to Maximize Your Life. Psalm 90 verse 12 reads, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Our time on earth is limited, so it's vital that we use it for the glory of God. Join me for part four of the message, How to Maximize Your Life. Thank you for joining us for this edition of the Good News Radio Broadcast with Pastor Tom Arnold. Tom serves as pastor of Good News Church in Yukon, Oklahoma, and is our teacher on this daily program. It is his desire that you will discover God's abundant plan for every aspect of your life through the faithful study of God's Word. Join us now as we go into today's message. So I don't know what to do. I'm going to call Pastor Tom, and he's going to tell me what to do. Pastor Tom's not going to tell you what to do, and you know why I'm not going to tell you what to do? Then I become responsible for your life. Now, I can encourage you, but at the end of the day, you need to make a decision because you heard from the Lord. So how to be led by the Holy Spirit. You need to understand spirit, soul, and body, and not everything that's emotional is God, and not everything that makes you cry is God. God's working when there are no emotions. But see, Jesus said, my words, their spirit in their life. And the best thing a pastor or best thing a minister can do is if they can get their words to be words birthed out from the Holy Spirit, that'll feed your spirit and it'll nourish you in your spirit. And the pastor needs to be a feeder and he needs to feed people in their spirit. Okay, here's the third thing about making the most out of your life or maximizing your life is this, stay filled with the Holy Spirit. Say, well, Pastor, I got filled. I went to camp when I was 14 years old, and I got prayed for. I held out to the last night of camp, but I got prayed for, and I got filled with the Holy Spirit, and I even spoke in other tongues as the Spirit gave me utterance, and it was a very emotional time, and that was back in 1947, and I got Spirit-filled. Okay, I'm fixing to read something to you here. Ephesians 5 and 17 and 18 says, Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Verse 18, And do not get drunk on wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. But I want you to notice the Amplified. I'm just going to jump to verse number 18 in the Amplified. It says, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But notice what it says in the Amplified. But ever be filled and stimulated with the Holy Spirit. Notice this, but ever be filled. It's a picture of a perpetual infilling of the Spirit. The way I word it is this way. There's one baptism in the Spirit, but there's multiple refillings of the Holy Spirit. So one person can get baptized in the Spirit 15 years ago, but between that initial baptism and where they're at today, they should have had plenty of refillings of the Holy Spirit constantly stay full. Now, how do you do that, Pastor? Music helps, worship music, what you listen to. But, you know, people, they listen to this stuff that really is draining them instead of building them. And so we got to be ever filled with the Holy Spirit. And so did you know it's better to be alone than to be with bad company? Well, I get lonely. Well, just fellowship with the Lord. Well, Pastor, I need friendship. Well, it's good. What a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, pastor, you're just being facetious. No, actually, he's closer to you than you think. There is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. And you just got to walk in the awareness of that. Luke 4 and 1 says this, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Notice the parallel. He was full of the Spirit, and he was led by the Spirit. I had a person come to me years ago, and they were making a huge decision that affected their career, their family. And they said, well, what do you recommend I do? I know the Lord's leading me out of this. What do you recommend I do? And boy, I thought this decision is going to affect a wife. It's going to affect kids. It's going to affect a lot of people's lives. And I'm like, Lord, what do I tell them? And you know, my advice was if you will spend plenty of time praying in the language of the spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit, you'll have a higher chance of being led by the Holy Spirit. And I just encourage them, spend plenty of time praying in the Spirit. Pray in the language of the Spirit. It'll help you pray out the perfect will of God. So it'll help you to be more sensitive to the promptings of the Spirit. It'll help you to just be sensitive to the Lord, okay? So what can you do to maximize your life? How can you get the most out of your life? Keep your mind renewed to the Word of God. If you're going to be Spirit-led, keep your mind renewed to the Word of God. 
And that's not an easy thing to do. It's a necessary thing, but it's not always an easy thing to do. Oh, pastor, you're in full-time ministry. I imagine it's just easy for you to do that. You realize I'm made out of the same dirt you're made out of, all right? And if I don't keep my mind renewed, you know, pastors can get cranky like, just like you get cranky, right? Pastors can get discouraged. Any human emotion anybody deals with. You know, when I was a young pastor, I used to think, now, God, you got to give me immunity to all these problems so I can help your people. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Kind of like, you got to take care of me, so I got to take care of your people. Notice this, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm transformed. There's been a metamorphosis. There's been a change in my life. What'd you do, Pastor? Did you dye your hair? What did you do? I've done a transformation. What'd you do different? Well, I got my mind renewed to the Word of God. How did that happen, Pastor? Did that take any effort on your part? Because if it takes effort, I don't, I'm not in. You know, most people do that. They want to go somewhere where there's going to be a flip-flop, turnaround miracle, lay your hand on my head right now, put your hand right there and pray for me so I can get a flip-flop, turnaround miracle. I don't really want to change my life. I don't want to change my attitude. I don't want to change my words. I just need you to put your hand right here and let's get a flip-flop miracle and let's go on down the road. Y'all, even if you got a flip-flop miracle, you'd lose it by the time you got in the parking lot unless you turn your mouth around. And how do you renew your mind? You meditate, mutter, read and repeat, and re-speak it, and read the Word, meditate, think on the Word, talk the Word, praise God for His Word, and worship the Lord. You know, I think early in my ministry, I was out of balance. I wouldn't spend enough time just worshiping the Lord. One time the Lord, you heard me say that years ago, the Lord spoke to me and said, just enjoy me, just enjoy me. And that changed everything for me. It changed my devotional time. It changed everything. Just enjoy God. I got stuff to do around the house. I just put on some music. I'm just going to enjoy God. If you'll get your mind renewed, it'll be easier for you to discern and delineate the will of God and, uh, you know, ascertain what God wants you to do. So train your spirit, meditate the word, practice the word, put the word first in your life. If the word says it, just do it. And then this Ephesians 4 and 23 says this, and be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. You know, I still have the discipline of three by five cards reading through scripture memorization. Now, I'm not every day. It's not every single day. I do some type of meditation every day, but still part of my discipline. I don't do this to get righteous. I do this because I am righteous, and I do this because it helps me grow spiritually. And so it just helps me to just go by and remind myself, because I've learned when storms come, it sure helps when you say, it is written. The devil hates it when you say that. Do you know the first words that came out of the lips of Jesus after he had spent 40 days, 40 nights, he's fasting, he's seeking God. The first words that came out of the lips of Jesus during the time of the fast, it's, it is written written. I like to amplify it. It has been written. Man shall not live by bread alone. So, you know, three times it is written, it is written, it is written. So Jesus modeled for us, what do you do when the devil comes your way? Speak the word, okay? Develop a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Everybody is a spirit. Everybody has a sense of an inward voice, inward tuition. In Romans chapter 14 and verse number 19 says, Let us therefore follow after the things that make for peace and things wherewith one may edify another. So follow after peace. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they're making some decisions that relate to their career. And he said, you know, every time I look, even see some of the opportunities or options that are out there, as soon as I get to think about it, just like in my spirit, it'd be like, no, that's not it. That's the Lord talking to you. And follow after things that make for peace. Each person here tonight, each one of us tonight, there's things in your life that you're seeking God's direction on. Maybe it's your health. Did you know if you'll be led by the Holy Spirit, he'll help you get healthier? He will. If you'll follow the Holy Spirit, we'd say it this way, he has a health plan. 
No, God's not out to diminish your health. He's out to replenish your health. God has a financial plan for your life. How do you want this to look? Do I need to get this? Do I need to buy that? Is this a good opportunity for me? But you know, here's what Christians do. They get saved. They confess Jesus as their Lord and Savior. They get the gift of eternal life. And in their mind, they're not this obvious when they do it. But it's almost like, okay, I'll see you in heaven. I got my own plans. I got my own ideas. I got a life. I got some dreams of mine. I'm going to go ahead and do them, and I'll catch up with you when I get to heaven. That's not even the Bible. Jesus is the Lord of your life, and Jesus didn't look at the disciples and say, I'll see you guys in heaven. No, he said, pick up your cross and follow me. And the cross is a picture of dying to your own ways. Now, maybe we don't talk about that enough in the church today, but the Bible really doesn't preach self-fulfillment. It talks about self-denial, laying your life down. Water baptism is not just a little ceremony. It's a picture of you died to yourself. That old man's dead. You've been buried with him in baptism, and now you're raised in full newness of life that you might serve the Lord. People think, oh, it's just a little ceremony. It's a picture of, and it is a picture of your sins being washed away, but it's really a picture of a prototype. It's a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus and how you identify with his death, burial, and resurrection and that you plan on dying to your old ways and you're coming alive to do the will of God. Amen. Somebody say, oh, that, that sounds morbid. Well, that's exactly what the Bible says. It says mortify the deeds of the flesh. And he wants you to just lay aside all that stuff and say, Lord, I want to do your will. But here's what Jesus said while he was on the earth. It's not until you lose your life that you really find your life. Once you just give it up and say, Jesus, I want to do life your way, then all of a sudden you step. And and the Amplified says if you'll lose the lower life, you'll gain the high life. So you think you're holding on to something special. No, you need to let go of that and say, Lord, what do you want this to look like? Did you know God has a better plan? I got to tell you one little funny thing, because these come to my mind, and I'm going to wrap up. Last year, we had one of our boys, he came to us, he goes, well, I'd like to go to this camp, Dad. I want to go to this camp. I want to go to this camp. As a dad, I'm like, okay, uh, Lord, how do you want this to look? I'm just praying, God, how do you want this to look? And I was praying, and I heard the Lord say this. He said, I have something better. I have something better. I'm like, okay, you have something better. So I just went to him. I said, you know, son, I just feel like God's got something better for us. And it was our middle child. And I said, I think God's got something better for us. And then I was praying a few nights later, and it was just like the Lord was saying, hey, you don't need to go to Washington, D.C. Whatever money y'all were going to take on his camp, just pull all that together. Instead of taking send one away, all of you go. And we went to Washington, D.C. last year and went to the Museum of the Bible. And, you know, we'd gone there before, but we went again last year. And I mean, we had a great time. Every part of it was blessed. But I thought to myself, how many times are we about to do something and the Lord says, I got something better for you? Thanks for joining me for today's broadcast. We will never fully maximize our time on earth unless we learn to daily follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Jesus modeled for us an example of a life that was fully surrendered to the Spirit of God. A life that is fully yielded is also a life that is fully blessed. Thank you for listening to today's message. You can hear this message again by visiting online at goodnewschurch.tv. To listen to this and many other messages by Pastor Tom, download the Good News Church mobile device app by searching for Good News Church Yukon through both the iTunes and Android stores. Through the website, you can also subscribe to the podcast. Pastor Tom invites you to visit Good News Church whenever you are in the greater Oklahoma City area. Good News is located at the intersection of Main Street and the Yukon Parkway in Yukon. He welcomes you to worship with them on Sundays at 10 a.m. Good News Church, it's a great place to be.